Hello everyone, this is Encouraging Elephant and welcome to episode 26 of the Wigan Athletic Career Mode. So since I recorded the original intro to this video, some things have changed and it made the old intro outdated. So what I'm going to do is quickly explain some things regarding this series. So basically the format for this series will change from this episode onwards and episodes will be shorter, so they will be between two to five games in length, depending on other stuff in the video. For example, contract talks, transfers, squad reports, and stuff like that. So, giving you an actual episode example, three games and a squad report, or five games with no extra bits, and maybe sometimes two games and lots of transfer negotiations. Goal and player of the month will still happen, but will be more random in terms of when they'll be shown in episodes but will continue to be at the start of every month for the previous month. So, say if an episode starts halfway through September and ends in October, once I reach the 1st of October, I will do goal of the month for September and also player of the month for September as well. So, don't worry about that. Making these episodes shorter, but hopefully uploaded faster, is part of a new thing I'm doing with my channel, so... Don't worry about it, I'm not stopping career mode. But I'll explain all that in a separate video that I will link to below. But for now, back on with the episode. And before we get into any games this episode, I am going to take a look at the contracts. We have five people who are out of contract next year, so if I don't sort out their contracts pretty soon, they could leave on a free. Those people are Akin Fenwick, Grig, Boateng, Byrne and also Dunkley. However, Akin Fenwo is going to retire at the end of the year, so no new contract for him. But for Grig, Boateng, Byrne and Dunkley, I do want to give these guys new contracts. But some of these guys, for example Dunkley, only on 3,200, now in the Premier League, will ask for a lot more money. So this could be quite expensive. But there is one person we definitely need to keep, and that is Will Grigg, as he was player of the season for the first season. We definitely need to get him a contract. I won't show the contract negotiations, it's really, really boring. So what I'll do is come back and explain what's gone on. Yeah, this is uh, bullshit, basically, is the best way to actually explain this, because Grig asked for £45,000 a week, so triple his wage. Bulleting asked for, I think it was about £55,000 a week, so that's, what, 11 times his wage? Jack Byrne asked for, I think it was £50,000 a week, so almost 10 times his wage. I'm going to try with Dunkley now, and hopefully he'll be the one nice guy in this situation, because it's just so bad, because we're in the Premier League, they're like, we want this, this, this and this, and it's like, no, get fucked. Thank you actually Dunkley for actually agreeing to that, because I've discovered as well, you can't negotiate on squad roll. Contract length, you can do a year either side, so if they ask for three years you can do two or four. Release clause you can't really negotiate with if they want one, you have to either decline it or accept it. Luckily he doesn't want one. And in terms of wages, this is what I'm talking about people, he is literally asking for ten times his wage purely because he now plays in the Premier League and it is just utter bullshit. I mean he's a 68 overall player and wants £32,000 a week. With a signing bonus of half a million about that, and a clean sheet, well, if he gets five clean sheets, which he might get an extra £200,000, it is just bullshit. Like, why? This negotiation system is so broke as well, because like, I'm willing to give him twenty grand a week, and I think for somebody who's on £3,200 a week to go up to twenty grand a week is quite a lot of money. I mean, I'll give him a signing bonus as well, but I guarantee it's either going to be, yeah, look, we want well, £33,000 or nothing, really. But that's like, it's not even half a budget, it's pretty much all my budget will go to offering one player a contract. It is just completely broken. You can't negotiate with the actual agents. They're like, no, no, it's this much or nothing. That they're going down slightly and slightly every time. It's gonna honestly, I'm just gonna try and do this contract as best as I can and try and get the cheapest deal. Just to show you guys how broken this actually is. See, he's coming down by £500 every so often, but I'm still like potentially gonna pay him 30 grand a week. 
a 68 overall player, is now earning 30 grand a week and has got a signing bonus of about half a million. I'm dreading to offer Chaplin a contract. I am dreading offering Van Bergen a contract. It might be next season I don't buy any players and just give all my team a brand new contract because it's just so fucking broken. Seriously, the negotiations from Championship to Premier League are brutal and something definitely needs to be fixed with those because that is fucking bollocks. So in this episode, there will only be three games. First, an away game against Spurs. Then a home game versus Chelsea before we travel to St. James's Park and face Newcastle. And that means at the start of the next episode, we'll take on Luton in the Carabao Cup. And then we'll also do the Goal of the Month and Player of the Month for October. So that'll include this episode's goals and performances and all that stuff. So don't worry, it will work out. But yeah, this episode, three big games. Spurs, Chelsea and Newcastle might not get any points from any of these games. And for the first game of the episode, we will be travelling to Wembley to face Spurs. going to be a very big match because it is first versus second. But to be honest, I can see us getting absolutely battered in this match. We got lucky against Everton, we got lucky against Liverpool. But this one, I can just see us losing this. Not lost a game yet, although saying that, Spurs have only lost one, won the other five. Could be a bad time for us. But I am using my best team for this game. We do have a week before our next game against Chelsea, so use the strongest side possible against a strong side like Spurs. You see our team there, and as for Spurs, they've got Janssen up front, so no Harry Kane, Ali playing behind him, Nkudu on the left, and Tissoka on the right, Dyer and Wanyama in the middle, Dix or Dykes at left back, Oria at right back, Kurt Vickers and Foyth as the centre backs, and Gazaniga as the keeper, so they're playing one or two good players like Ali, like Wanyama and Dyer and Oria, but the rest of them may be a second team players because we are Wigan, they're playing like a weaker side, so I've seen this happen in other FIFAs, it might be happening in this one, but you never know, that might give us a chance to actually uh, win this match. Inside, play it back from Chaplin to Gilby, into Calvert-Lewin, now to Ivan Salvador, first chance of the game, wide of the post, but positive start from us. That's yours Acosta mate, no doubt, there you go. Jack Byrne somehow loses out to Deli Alley though. I mean, really Jack? Man, he was in fucking front of him. Wanyama with a nice little turn though, past Gilbert and oh, oh, fucking hell. Spurs almost taking the lead there through Victor Wanyama. Would have been a very unlikely goal scorer for them. And Jack Byrne gets a yellow card. I did do a late tackle, but I did not think it was yellow card worthy. Now that's not yellow card worthy. That man just fell over, but claw from Spurs and bit of a warning for us in terms of our temperament. Maybe we've got to calm it down a bit. Really? That was a challenge you put in, Gilby. You're going to get yellow card for it as well, but that is not the biggest of our problems. 1-0 to Spurs, Deli Alley with a goal. And that was just a weak attempt at a tackle by Gilby. Shit defending, don't know where Dunk is going. Man, you've been giving a shit ton of money, mate. You've got to defend better than that. It's a good finish by Ali, I expect Randolph maybe to dive, I don't know, three seconds earlier, maybe just attempt to fucking save it, but it is 1-0 to Spurs, I would say they've been the more threatening side with terms of shots on goal and stuff, and it's that man who gets a goal, Deli Ali. in real life I think he is massively overrated, dives too much, but I am a Chelsea fan saying that, so you know, quite biased, but 1-0 to Spurs, not good from us. Grig, uh, muscle by Wanyama, you kind of expect that. It is, after all, Victor motherfucking Wanyama. And they didn't track that run. Of course it's not tracked it. Nobody's even getting back to bother tracking it. Dan Byrne makes a cracking... You see, when Dan Byrne got the ball there, Riff, that means it's a good tackle. And what you've given here is a penalty for a good tackle. I mean... I can't even understand where you can... I slid in here... It's a handball, without a doubt, but handballs aren't turned on, so technically... Oh, wow, bring on Christian Eriksen, that's fine. That's nice. Yeah, do that. That's not a penalty, though. That is not a penalty. We've been fucked, though. Uh, but Janssen now, stepping up. Maybe Randolph can put him off, who knows. I think he's going to go this way. And he does as well. Randolph, good save. 
and then Dan Byrne almost plays it back into fucking danger. But we got away with one there. To be honest, justice has been served with that, because that was bollocks. But saying that, they'll still score from this because our players are not marking shit. And that's through to Sissoko, and yep, yeah, told you, 2 0. Uh, it would help if you actually mark players, to be honest, because they're not doing it. I've like got a career mode of Chelsea going on, like a personal career mode, and I don't have this problem. Like They actually mark people like... I don't know what Dunkley's doing. I think Dunkley actually, after being given that contract, has just gone shite. He's a player of the month, two fucking months running. I guarantee he's not getting it this month, because he has been wank. 2-0 to Spurs, just after we saved a penalty... They go get the go and get themselves a goal here. Two 0 Told you we won't get any points from this episode and the way we're playing. Fuck me. Might get relegated on this one. Really might do. Jansen now coming off. Have they brought on Harry Kane by any chance? Just to make my misery worse. I think they might have done as well. Gilby good header out. Good fucking one ref. That's a fell one and a half. We haven't called that, have you, you dick shit? And that's another penalty. You fucking cunt ref. You can fuck off and suck a dinosaur dick. Go back in time, find a dinosaur, take its dick in your mouth, and you'll probably kill you by doing it, you fucking knob. Bullshit. Fucking free kick before for us, nothing given. I try and get the ball with a cost, he's like, no, I'm going to kick the man. I know what I'm doing. Knob. And now Harry Kane is on for Janssen, let's see if he can score this. Probably will do, I guarantee he will. What the fucking... What is that fucking run-up? It's 3 nil to Spurs, but what the fuck was that run-up? You dodgy-looking cunt. Don't get me wrong, Harry Kane, probably one of the best strikers in the world at the moment, as of me recording this, and by the way, just in case you are wondering, it is the 28th of December I'm recording this, so, you know, in that time he could have shot a kid, I don't fucking know. But yeah, 3-0 to Spurs, but watch this run up. What the fuck are you doing? Galloping or fucking running? 3-0 to Spurs, we've got no chance in this game. It's just been shit defending, referee's been a bit dodgy at times, giving away two penalties, but... Yeah, I don't know what else to say other than fuck me. They still, what are you doing that fucking wanker symbol for? You're not a fucking wanker. His what? His first goal? Shit me. This is not looking good for us. Can't even fucking get a head. He's like, why are you not reacting to anything that's going on in front of you? At all. Where are you going? Where are you, actually, where is he going then? No, actually, no. Try and get your foot in on the ball. Oh my god, it's going to be fucking four. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Just give him a fourth. It's all right. Four nil Spurs. I just, I'm running out of things to say. I really am. Just, this is embarrassing. Completely and utterly embarrassing. I mean, even Sissoko scoring goals against us. I mean, I'm not saying he's a great player. I'm not saying he's a fucking awful player. But what is that defended by Dan Byrne? But that is some fucking bullshit look for him, though. It's so a good finish, I'm surprised he gets his foot that high. Technically, that's a high foot on Randolph, but, you know, I'll let it slide. I'll let it slide. 4-0 for Spurs. End the game. End the game, ref. And uh, thank you very much, referee, for putting us out of a fucking misery. 4-0 to Spurs. What a one-sided and AIDS game that was. I mean, Spurs definitely deserve to win, but not by four. Not by four. Two penalties for them, they missed one, but it did lead to a goal. Second penalty was, like, just absolute garbage. Fuck that. So like I said, Spurs definitely deserve to win, but when they only had six shots on target and technically we saved one from a penalty, it kind of makes you see that pretty much every shot on target they had went in. We had one shot on target, we didn't deserve anything from this match. Maybe we might have scraped a draw if we were lucky, but yeah, just awful. But they made 12 tackles, we made eight, and we made three fouls, got two yellow cards as well, and we got an injury. It was just... Yeah, that was a bad game for us. If Calvert Lewin's out for more than like one or two games, we are completely fucked. Wow. And now our next game is hopefully going to be a good one. Back at home, this time, however, against Chelsea, the other good London club. Yes, Arsenal, I am saying you are not a good London club at the moment. As of me recording this, again, since I've fucking done this, they could have won every game going by like eight fucking goals. But anyway, against Chelsea, after our last game, which we are now going to forget, let's get back on track and hopefully get a point from this match. Anything more would be a miracle. So after that last game, we've made one change, and that is Clerk Salter in at right centre-back for Dunkley. Dunkley just did not play that well. Plus, Clerk Salter will now be against his former club, so hopefully he can do something good 
against his uh, former boss. Other than that, keeping the same team, Cabot Lewin's injury was only five days and nothing too major, and Chelsea are playing a very strong side. Hazard, Morata, and Willian up front, I think that is going to be hard to break down. Kante and Van Ginkel in the middle, so Kante is going to be a problem. They've got Alonso at left back, who's quite good. David Louise. I think maybe Omaru and Kalas are the two weak links, and they've got Florenzi at right back. Personally, I'll play Moses, but that's just me. And then also Thibaut Courtois in goal. So Chelsea really going for this one, and we got dicked 4 0 by a second string Spurs side. So they almost full strength Chelsea squad. This could get really, really embarrassing. Cricket score incoming. Calvert Lewin almost losing out there. Chaplin play into him. Oh, that's a good block by Van Ginkel. He's got it back though. Calvert Lewin stripped Van Ginkel on the shot. That is kind of a chance we need to take. We're straight at uh, Courtois. That was a terrible pass in. And wow. Yeah, I think he broke his leg there, mate. I really do. Got to defend this well. Jockey him. Don't let him inside. Like that. That's Hazard as well. Clerk sold a brilliant tackle. How are we letting them have so much room? Dan, or just dancing like a dickhead, and Randolph, what are you the pussy ass say for? Oh, good ball across, well dummied, stupidly probably. Chaplin, that is a very slow take. Whip it in. Oh, you cock tease. That was a cock tease of a header, that. He jumped up, I thought, he's in a bit of space, he's going to head it, he's actually a free header, that's embarrassing. Discipline problem. That's what I'm looking for, discipline problem. But Chaplin, oh, you fucker caught to a through to Clerk Salter. I keep saying Clerk Salter, it's Calvert Lewin. Good touch though, get forward. Passion man, good little movement. Wide of the post. Bapa da boopy. Okay, you've dropped there, so I'm going to hit it forward to Calvert Lewin. And you're going to flick this header on. In hindsight, you all don't be fucking, don't pretend to be injured, you absolute knob. There's a the space, there's the goal. You injured, mate, are you again? Calvert Lewin, you little bitch. Fucking hell. He went for a fucking head and missed the head. And we know Jacobs has come on, we get it. Ah, fucking 1 0 Chelsea. And it was just so simple. As soon as they went ultra attacking, Kalas is there. Flippy Anderson's there as well. It's a beautiful finish by Hazard. But again, it's so. Like. Yeah, when you see stuff like that, you think that is literally impossible to actually, like, you know, defy physics. Technically, biology as well to break your bones and then kick behind. Like, who the hell's that come? Then running past. Yeah, it's annoying when you see it go in like that, but seven goals now for Hazard. He is their top scorer and I think the league's top scorer. And we're 1 0 down. Gilby, good little flick. Burn. Jacobs on the overlap. It's a cracking bit of play, this. He just control it well. He has done as well. Michael Jacobs, do your trademark shot. Oh, Maru. Oh, Maru. Oh, Kenneth Amaru, oh, whatever his fucking name is. He won't play for Chelsea, we all know that. He's going to come back off his own and get sold. But they're playing him, rubbing it in. And on comes a man who's actually at Atletico Madrid in real life. Diego Costa. Dan Byrne, good tackle. And forward to Jacobs. Could be our last chance of the match. Michael Jacobs, you have the pace. You're fresh on the pitch. Michael Jacobs, can't fuck up this chance. Played across. Calvert-Lewin, shooting at Courtois. Bubba Teng with the follow-up and Courtois makes another save. Fuck you. There you go, another defeat, not as bad as the Spurs won, but still a defeat nevertheless. 1-0 loss to Chelsea, we were looking like we were going to get a point, maybe a snatch all three at the end, but in the end it's a, it's a defeat. The Chelsea side, who looked fucking fantastic on paper, didn't play extremely well, but in the end got the result they probably deserved. But that's two losses in a row for us, not looking good. And you can see the stats here, you might think it's in our favour, but to be honest, a lot of those shots from us were straight out of the keeper and from range, so take away three shots from us and three shots on target that were straight out of the keeper and from stupid angles, and it kind of evens itself out. I mean, in terms of like discipline for both sides, we wreck a discipline because two yellow cows each, two fouls, three for us, and another injury for Calvert-Lewin, although he was back to fully fitness, but... You know what, it's a defeat against Chelsea and Spurs. In real life, you know, that's kind of what you expect from Wigan, but it wasn't, it wasn't the defeat. It was the performances 
in the Spurs game and the first half of this one that upset me quite a bit because they just weren't good enough. The passing was off. Second half it got better, but Chelsea got the goal. They were clinical. We weren't. And yeah, next game against Newcastle, try and get something from it. If not, it's been an awful episode. And for the last match this episode, we're going to travel to St. James's Park and face Newcastle. Going to be a interesting match. Hashtag new wig. You saw that then. If a ball person, for example, Donald Trump, buys new wig, hashtag new wig. Anyway, on with the actual match and my analysis, well, pre-game, report, whatever you want to call it. We've got to get something. A draw, a win, anything. Scrape a result, I don't care how. Newcastle, three wins, two draws, three losses, but we're coming off the back of two losses with no goals. Get a goal, get a draw, I'm happy. And our team of this match looks like this. We've got Jacobs and Boateng in for... Van Bergen and Salvador. Salvador has been dropped completely because he's been underperforming as of late, so he doesn't deserve to really play. And Clerk Salter stays as the right centre back because he played quite well against Chelsea in that last match. As for Newcastle, they've got, I believe that's Yusuf Poulsen up front, Ayose Perez behind him, Thomason on the left, and Atsu on the right. Hayden and Callback, fucking Callback, he returns as central mid. Moreno at left back, actually a pretty good purchase for them. Lejuen and Clerk as the centre backs, and McLaughlin as a right back. Tim Krull in goal, so quite a good Newcastle side. One that I should be really competing with for mid table. I, not realistically, like that's our ambition to get mid table, beat sides like this. So I'm hoping for a win. A draw I would settle for, but more than anything, at least a goal or two, please. Right, and Chaplin back into Boateng. We've got a lot of pace in this side now with Boateng on the pitch, though, because with him and Van Bergen, it's just pace all around. So we can't really play both of them and, like, I don't lose that passing ability that sometimes Jacobs and Salvador possess. I'm just talking bullshit now, to be honest. Not really like to hit this pitch, though, because of the shadow. Jacobs, why not have a shot? See, that is why you play for me. That is why... I don't know, I don't get you. You play good at times and other times you are shite, but we've got a goal. I'm happy about that. And fucking Michael Jacobs gets it. I don't know why he's Irish. But 1-0 to us. It's just been a better start than the last two games. Finally got a bit of movement inside. Defending was Paul by Moreno, I believe. And it left us a gap to take a shot, take a chance. And Jacobs, boy did he take it. Cracking shot. Cruel may be a bit disappointed. He could have potentially done better, but... It's not a bad strike at all. It's 1-0 to us. We've got to go this episode. We've taken the lead. There we go. 1-0. Mikey Jacobs, first goal of the Premier League. Only took him seven minutes to get it in this match. 1-0. Oh, good defending there, mate. Good lazy leg you put across. Clerk Soltoner against Atsu. Keeping pace quite well, considering. Probably former teammates at Chelsea. What a fucking train together. That was a terrible pass. And it's led him in. Randolph, good block. Gilby getting the way, never mind. Thomason makes it 1 1. Our first chance went in, and their first chance went in, but those had a lot more fortune about it. You can tell you that much. Clerk Salter just didn't. He did a good tackle in the end, good block, but the pass afterwards was shocking. Probably my fault, not his. And a couple of passes later, and one missed chance after. It's a goal for Newcastle. Bit disappointing that. I mean, we got the ball back, and then Atsu played it inside. Good block by Randolph. The fortune on that. I mean, Randolph saves it. It bounces off Gilby's back and loops onto this guy's foot, who stood on the penalty spot. I try and slide across with Gilby or Dan Byrne. None of them did. 1 1. Fortunate goal for them, but we've got to defend better than that if we want to keep clean sheets. Right, Jacobs, make the run. Over top to Jacobs. He's made his run too central, if anything, and that is why he's fucked himself over for. He's got it back, though. Michael Jacobs, go on, lad. Up a good ball in. Chaplin's waiting, and he makes it 2 1. It's all come through Jacobs winning the ball back after a shocking fucking run from him, to be honest, let's not lie. But he gets it back. Why are you celebrating with that cunt for? It's all fucking Jacobs who's done it. Cracking ball in, cracking header by a Chaplin as well, but he wins it back there. Don't expect him to. It's a brilliant ball in as well, too. The head of Chaplin, who heads it past Cruel, stretching like a motherfucker, not reaching it. And the uh, small man Chaplin, unmerked in the box, will get a free header and get a goal. Makes it 2-1, back in front. Let's keep this lead for more than like five minutes, guys. Come on. I mean, it's half time coming up, so, you know, going to half time. 
settle ourselves, come out and just play well, get another goal and then defend the lead. Calvert-Lewin, might go defensive pretty soon. We had a, a spell of chances, but they'll get those pretty soon as well. If you get goal side, Jack Byrne, you might have a fucking chance of fucking defending it and good save by Randolph. Brilliant. Just get goal side though. Why do they not do it? They just stand and wait on the wrong side and they wonder why they get chances like that. It's a brilliant save by Randolph. Maybe one for the cameras, but I don't care. If you make saves like that, do it all fucking day, mate. All fucking day. Yeah, maybe ultra defensive, actually, because they are going to go out fucking full all-out attack for this. Why did you not get across, though? Why have you fucking run off like a dick? And Dan Burn making the perfect block. Fuck in hell, team. Defend better, please. Fucking hell. Fucking... What? I looked away for a second to look where the pass was going, and you just did not control the ball. You absolute fucking cunt. Oh, fuck off. Fuck off, you absolute fucking waste of fucking space, Gilby. What a fucking bullshit that was. I passed it inside. I looked left to think, right, I'm going to pass it forward to... I think Boateng, not Boateng, um, Van Bergen, who was, I think, forward. But no, he just doesn't control the fucking ball for some bullshit reason. And they get back in the fucking game. Fuck you. Like, what was he doing? I don't even know what he was doing. And, like, no murky from Acosta. Good finish by Perez. Fucking 2-2, but that is fucking either FIFA aids or Gilby's just decided not to fucking play anymore. Fuck off. Fuck right off. I know we haven't been playing fantastic, but that's just fucking shit from Gilby. Absolute shit. Fuck off, Greg, you're not coming on. I don't like Kandere and Nacho's quite tired for. He's not fucking played in weeks. Over the top to Van Bergen. Get that, get that, get that, get that. Good one, Van, Go on, Van Bergen, lad. A cross goal. Why did you leave it? That's why you left it. Gilby's at the back stick and going to make it 3 2. I just called you literally minutes ago. I still think you're a fucking dick, mate. But it's 3 2. Can we hold the fucking lead? We've got about maybe seven minutes with extra time to play. Just hold on. Cracking ball over the top. But guess who the fucking ball over the top was by? Fucking Jacobs. And honestly, Calvert Lee missed that and dummied it. If Gilby would have missed, I would have liked to just drop them them two, Calvert Lewin and Gilby from the next like seven games. But fucking hell, Gilby, you've made up for your shitty mistake before. Good finish, good play, cracking ball by Jacobs. First goal for Gilby in the Premier League, and hopefully he might have saved his blushes from before. 3 2. And Jacobs didn't react to that. I thought he might have done, but you know. Never mind. 3 2 win. Fucking get in. Oh, that was a painful game. Newcastle didn't deserve shit from this. Especially fucking call back the ginger bastard. But we get a 3-2 win. Whew, that was her. And you, Voldemort motherfucker at the end, trying to get away with that bullshit. You can fuck off. 3-2. Three, three goals, three points. He does not get any fucking credit for that because it would have been a 2-1 win without him. He fucked up for the fucking third second goal, but got us a third. Couldn't miss. It was all down to Jacobs and Van Bergen. I can see the stats here. We kind of deserved it, even-ish game, I suppose, on the actual figures, but the shots on target weren't too dangerous. I mean, two came for the first goal, and I think the rest pretty much led to a goal or were involved in a massively good save by Randolph. We deserved it, got our chances, took them well, but once again, another injury for us. Reese James on the 20th minute. It was an awful foul by, I think it was um, Isaac Hayden in the middle, if I'm not mistaken, so... Disappointed another injury, hopefully it's not too bad, the other ones have been minor injuries. So hopefully this one's not too bad and we can just carry on into the next game in the next episode with a fresh full team available to us. And unfortunately it will be a long injury for Reese James. Three weeks out with a sprained knee so that means Acosta will come in at left back and will bring Nathan Byrne back into the squad at right back. So we have cover for it but it's not an injury I really want to have and uh, three weeks without a first choice left back is going to be a problem for us so that'll be the end of the episode there people as you can see we are somehow still in the top three but the biggest worry for me is the goals conceded we have currently got the fourth worst defense in the premier league and somehow we're third i mean everton have conceded 16 so one more goal than us and the bottom two clubs sunderland and west brom have conceded three more goals than us and sit bottom of the table the only thing keeping us that high up is a goal scored and hopefully we can just, I don't know, keep getting points against teams like Newcastle, 
and maybe try and see out games against Chelsea and get those points. Spurs, however, seem to be the early pay setters and they have a game in hand over us, as do Chelsea, so they can extend their lead on us. But to be honest, this is good. Nine games in, so a quarter of the way through the season. In third place, that is well over what I was expecting. But we do need to improve in defensive areas is a must because we have been shocking at the back these past few games. But that'll end the episode there, people. You can see the rest of the table. Look for your favourite team and see how well they're doing. If you support Spurs, then fair enough to you. Your team's doing fucking amazing. But that'll be it for the episode. I hope you enjoy watching. I'll see you again next time for more of the Wigan career mode very soon. Goodbye.